Okay, so there's a noon, so I think we can, we can start the session. I would like to welcome you very, very warmly. And <laughs> thank you to all of you that you decided to choose, choose my session uh, about the, the Saga pattern and the Saga related pattern. Okay, so uh, let me introduce myself a little bit. Uh, my name is Marius, Marius Dean, and uh, I am a developer, PHP developer since 2000, more or less. So I saw a PHP free on production. <laughs> it was years ago. So, uh, right now we've got the PHP 7, which is really, really cool. Uh, the little things, as you probably know, as I spoke, because I spoke an uh, hour ago in, in second room, I run my own company, which is a source ministry. It's a very, very small PHP related and consultancy company. We are working with different teams, with the developers, with the companies, and we are learning, we are working with, uh, with code. Uh, usually, develop stuff. And uh, usually, I am going to talk about the, 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 the Bottega because I'm the Bottega trainer. And uh, these guys are very, very interesting for me because in Bottega, none of them is a PHP developer except me. And uh, this is a perfect occasion for me as a developer to learn from other technologies like Java, like .NET, like C Sharp about the, the stuff I'm interested with. Uh, let's say DDD because DDD is, is my core area of uh, interest. And usually I got this slide with Blue Elephant. I saw a few tests with this uh, Blue Elephant sign of PHPS community, which is awesome. So thank you very much for attending the session. And thank you very much to all of you uh, who speak at PHPS meetups, who, who, who uh, are able to join at PHPS meetup. And a small, small announcement for you, if there is no PHPRS meetup in your city, it may be you are an organizer. So call us and, and we will uh, check what, what we can do to help you in PHPRS meetup organization. And uh, this year, 2017, we, we had uh, a PHP summit, second edition. In next year, 2018, there will be a third edition of, of summit, <coughs> probably in Poznan. Again, I think it's a perfect location in central, central Poland, so, so everyone is <laughs> able to join uh, the, 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 the APP in Poznan. And uh, as you probably know, I'm addicted to elephant, but I usually say that behind every single elephant I've got, there's a very, very unique history, unique friendship, unique travel. And because some of you are interested with elephants, I've got two elephants. It's an Enfys or Black Symphony. So if you would like to, to, to have one, I can give away to you. Just pick me on Twitter and write what exactly you learned at this conference. At the evening, I will randomly take, uh, I'm going to randomly take a few, uh, I mean two people, and uh, elephants will be yours. And uh, this is the first edition of, of PHP Central Europe. So I would like to thank the organizer that this year, uh, we've got the English tracks and we can host English, um, English speaking uh, speakers. And, uh, and of course, it's also that we've got speakers from Poland. Especially, which is very, very cool, we've got the Arkadiusz Kondas. Are you familiar with this guy? If not, check this GitHub. Check GitHub of AEG and uh, see MLI, a library. It's a machine learning library written by AEG, purely in PHP. And AEG was awarded for quality of its code in last contest. So check this guy on the GitHub. We've got the Lukasz Szymański from Elix, which is also a very interesting speaker, joined the session, um, delivered by, by, by Lukasz. And of course, we've got the Derek, author of Beloved XD Bucket. <laughs> so um, it's really a really cool situation that we can host famous speakers. And I hope the next edition will be even bigger and uh, the more experienced people and experienced speakers from the PHP community across Europe will be able to join us. Uh, maybe you know some, maybe you know others. <laughs> who, who knows? <laughs> okay, so let's, let's go back to the, to the topic. I would like to, to, to talk a little bit about the, about the sagas and uh, modeling complex processes in time. Um, in this topic, this, this, this title is a little bit problematic uh, because it's an error, to be honest, in this, in this, uh, in this title. But, All title seems to be very interesting for me because all is all about the modeling. 
as you saw at the book my previous session, I'm highly interested in software model. Software implementation using web frameworks, yeah, we had to perform this, this operation, but the domain modeling and system modeling is even more important at this point. And uh, I'm not interested in easy systems. I'm, I'm interested in high complexity, high value systems where you can, uh, you should perform every, you should use every single neuron in your brain to deliver a good, a good design. And the, the modeling complex processes, especially span it with time, especially span it with external systems, sometimes are very, very hard to implement, hard to, 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 to organize, hard to control, and hard to test. Um, and of course, we'll be talking about the side. As I said, I'm very, very interested in software model. And the last hour I spent describing a, a, a technique I, I, I'm using every every single day almost the, the, for, for software modeling, which is an even story. And I have to a little bit. Um, I, I have to repeat some of this, some of this session uh, because some concepts are required to 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 to, to decide a topic. And uh, I tried different techniques for modeling. Uh, there are different strategies, different technique you can use uh, to talk people. Uh, to, about the requirements, the different techniques you can use to, 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 to model your objects. Uh, there's NAS strategies, PRAN strategies, CF storing, domain story modeling, etc. Et and after a few years, I, I realized that what is really worked for me is uh, modeling based on events, especially in, in, in event storing. And, and the techniques, uh, to talk about the sidebars, the process manager, we need two concepts. At least two concepts for event storings, maybe, maybe three concepts. Of course, an event. An event is a fact from domain, from domain, from business domain, which is really, really important for our domain expert. And this, this event represents something from the past. So events are immutable. You can't change your event um, because it was happening. If your application was wrong, and that event was produced, don't change it in your database because you will have some, some serious problems in, in the future. So, event is very, very useful to, to, to represent uh, your domain, to talk with other people about your domain, because even if you have no technical requirement in the background, sorry, uh, you, you are a business guy, you, you have no experience with IT, you, you are not a programmer, because you are a business guy, you can know or know what the event is, and you can easily identify the event in your domain. So, <coughs> during the event storm portion I, I, I described an hour ago, you can use this term to model and add events to your system. And usually, during this event storming workshop, you've got a lot of events um, found very, very quickly and easily. And if you add some, some events uh, storming related techniques for event organization, you can organize your, your domain in, in workflows. So, so for example, uh, if this events represent something from, let's say, a travel company um, application, maybe this events Oh, sorry. My partner. Maybe the upper events represent something from a uh, oh, travel order process. Maybe even at the bottom represents uh, something related to the flight booking. Who knows? Maybe uh, events at the right side represent a reclamation process. And of course, we need to, to model this in software. Right, we can add some. We can identify during the the, the, the event storm motion some boundaries. Maybe we can easily identify a, a bounded context boundaries. Or if you are familiar with domain driving design concept, <laughs> all the all the, 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 the movement was started in 2004 by Erin Evans' book about data complexity. And uh, after 30 years, we we still have problems 
with bounded context identification. Where is that? The bounder. And um, I think it's easy to understand what the event is. It's, it's, from the technical perspective, from the developer perspective, it's just a class. The implementation is just a class. No logic inside, just uh, properties. If you've got, let's say, if you've got an event uh, reclamation uh, accepted, you probably should attach some, some, some properties to see let's say, who was responsible for accepting this reclamation, when this reclamation was accepted, what was the reason, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And after all, you've got the classes in your system where every single event is represented by the class. And uh, <coughs> maybe 100 lines of code with comments. Nothing, no, no logic inside. And um, at one more time, if your <coughs> event represents something was happened, so this is a reaction of your system. Something was happened, maybe uh, this, this event is a reaction for, um, for your user action. Maybe your, uh, maybe, maybe your event is a reaction for time. Because time also may produce an event to our system. Your reclamation was in touch for 24 hours, so we need to cancel it. Uh, so 24 hours is the time trigger for our event. Maybe this event was produced by a, it's a consequence of other events or reaction for external system. Who knows? There are a bunch of possible solutions, a bunch of possible ways how you can produce it, what can produce events in your system. And uh, from our perspective and from the perspective of Saga, I think two of them are important. The event may be a consequence of other event, and the event may be a consequence of command. And uh, if you are not familiar with what the command is, you can start to think that if your user uh, perform an action in your system, let's say submit a formula with some, some data, and uh, and, and uh, uh, there is a logic behind this this, uh, this form. For, for example, your application may perform a, a flight booking or something like that. You may encapsulate a user equals in command class. And uh, this command is still a, a very, very simple, simple, simple class, just a DTO class properties, no logic inside. And this command will be produced probably by your web framework. In your controllers, in your in your web, um, web controller's action. All you need to do maybe is uh, just prepare a data for your command, create a command object, and pass to the uh, pass this uh, command uh, to the execution via a command bus or something like that. Uh, depending on size of your system, you may decide, let's say, to, to perform a command execution exactly in the same process, or you can execute your commands uh, on different machines via the Rabbit and QQE, who knows? And uh, there are a bunch of possible solutions you can use to implement the commands in, 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 our, in, in your PHP application. So for example, you can use Broadway, you can use a proof ecosystem, you can use Tactician, or you can implement everything from scratch. Depends on you. So command is an action, event is an interaction. It's, it's, it's pure physics. <laughs> and uh, of course, if you would like to jump a little bit more in this topic, a command, an event, is not enough. And usually in systems, when you are modeling the system, you need to model a few other objects, like entities, value objects, repositories, services, and of course, aggregates. And from my perspective, modeling the aggregates, especially in, in very, very highly complicated software, is hard. Because you can determine very, very easily what is the size of the aggregate, what the size of the aggregate will be perfect, uh, what is the ideal responsibility for this object, and so on, and so on, and so on. Yeah, this is still hard after 13 years after the, the, the Evans book. And uh, usually in our systems, we've got the, 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 a lot of commands in, and a lot of events. And um, let's say the, the, the yellow box that represents an aggregate called, let's say, a reservation. If you are working on travel um, company, you probably got a reservation object. And what kind of operation you can perform on reservation object? You can reject, you can cancel your reservation under some conditions. 
uh, for example, if there is a two weeks to, to your travel, you can cancel uh, without the penalty. If there is only one week to your travel, you, you can cancel your reservation to one. But you need, you, you, you need to pay a, a penalty fee. And what kind of other what kind of other operation you can perform on um, on a reservation aggregate? Um, maybe you can mark this, this reservation as completed or not. And um, if you are able to model your system, your model your domain, <laughs> as I said hour ago, usually in a high complexity, high value system, the, the, the model of the domain is the core of the system. This is a place where you can where you should apply every possible every single possible technique you know uh, to make this code extremely good. So you will see that you've got a lot of comments, a lot of events, a lot of aggregates. And uh, usually you need to connect them in some workflows. And uh, usually you, you have in, in your application some long-running business transactions. Long-running business transaction is not a DB transaction. It's a transaction from the business perspective. So for example, a booking in travel company may include some communication with external system, with airlines uh, booking system, with hotel booking system, with parental booking system, et cetera, et cetera, and uh, try to imagine what kind of problems uh, you may have if something will go wrong with your long-running transaction. And uh, if you are modeling your system, no matter what kind of technology you're using for modeling, what is wrong for me is uh, even storming. Sometimes you you can identify some whenever words. If or if if this reservation was cancelled in 24 hours before the travel and something something to something else, and uh, it usually means that in our software we should put some reactive logic like policies. Uh, our system should behave differently under some conditions. And of course, we've got a bunch of possible solutions how we can model this reactive logic. So we can use, for example, uh, a standard listeners, if this event happened. But it, it, this is a very, very simple case. Uh, do something if something was happened. But usually, the flow, especially in long-running business transactions, is more complicated. Uh, so, so we've got at least two options. We've got the sagas, and we've got process managers. And uh, the saga was mentioned in in, in, in in presentation time. But if you would like to to take your phone or laptop and find a definition for for saga right now, you will probably find a very very fast definition. And the probably definition of saga you can find right now you will find a three, four different definitions of sagas. Um, this concept for sagas was, was discovered and proposed in 18, 1984, if I remember uh, correctly, by Garcia. There was a scientific paper how we can perform, how we can implement a long-running business transactions in our system, especially if this transaction is spun across multiple external systems. Because in this kind of situation, we can't start a standard DB transaction. So the, the valid and the only valid definition of Saga is like that. It's a distribution of multiple workflows across multiple systems, each providing a path of compensating actions in the event that any of the step in the workflow fails. So in this definition, there are a few very, very critical words. words. So first, distributed workflow across multiple systems. Because you can start at these transactions. So, different, pre different representation of the definition 
using a, a even stormic notation from a from few minutes ago, maybe just like that. We've got the three systems, but maybe three models, maybe some other external system are involved in this long running business transaction. And this the whole process must be executed to complete a business transaction. So for example, we've got a model for um, flight registration, we've got the model for uh, hotel booking, and we've got the model for rental cars. And uh, Um, well. <laughs> I had a hope for applause after the talk, <laughs> at least. Um, so uh, using a, a concept for event storming or using the concept of commands and events, we can represent this flow as a set of steps. So every single step may be represented by a command. And the whole workflow will be just a set of the commands executed in specific way. And the Saga concept, uh, Saga concept um, offers you to weigh how to perform if something will be executed wrong in your system. And that's all. And this is a saga pattern. And so, for, so for example, if your first step was completed correctly, you can move forward. If the second step was completed okay, you can move forward. If the first step was executed badly, something was happened, and the whole transaction can't be executed correctly, we need to roll back all the operations. But if the third and the second step was related to external system. We need to communicate with external system to, 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 to roll back these transactions. And using, and using the commands, we can use it as very, very, we can implement it very, very quickly and lightly. So uh, this is a whole, this is a huge difference from ACID, um Concept. If you are if you are a user of single database, all your data are located in the single database. So you can use ACID model. You can use atomicity, consistency, isolation, durability, depending, of course, what kind of isolations, uh, transactions levels your your database offers. Because <laughs> maybe you don't know, but usually your database offer four level of transaction isolations. And sometimes, even if you start a transaction, you might get a record, <laughs> records deleted by other transactions. So check documentation and uh, in the context of your, of your database, what kind of isolations you, you, you may have. <laughs> if you've got a distributed system, for example, you, you are running your system across multiple servers, multiple services, microservices. You are touching external system, external services. The ACID model don't work. And then this is a place where you can introduce a base model. Basic availability, soft state, eventual consistency. Your system will be in consistent state in future, but right now your, your final state, your current state may be not be consistent. So sometimes this is a trade-off you can agree. Sometimes this is a trade-off you can't agree. So you should consider if your distributed software may work with this model. Or maybe you should um, implement your application completely different way. So Saga pattern is not for modeling processes. It's a failure pattern. And this is a whole definition of, of Saga. This is a failure pattern which offer you to weigh how, you, how to perform a compensation uh, steps if you would like to roll back your long-running business transaction across multiple systems. And uh, 
So, first example, uh, uh, this is a booking example. If you would like to, to, to make a reservation, so your user make a reservation, your user paid for this reservation, and then if you've got confirmation that, okay, you've got a payment collected, you can book a hotel, you can book extra hotel services, you can book flight, rental car, and finally you can notify a user about the, okay, everything was fine and you can go for your holidays. But if the hotel can't be booked, we need to return a payment and notify a user and stop the process, of course. If the flight can be booked, but we booked a hotel, we need to cancel a hotel booking, stop the payment, and so on and so on, and finally, sometimes we need to perform a lot of compensation steps to roll back every single uh, operation on external system. And maybe sometimes we can uh, allow that, okay, if you would like to, uh, to add some hotel services, but the hotel reject our request because there is no space for it, okay, it's not a problem. We can still go to the holidays. And uh, there are not so many implementation for Saga pattern uh, for, for PHP, especially uh, I, I, I'm a proof user. I'm using a proof components in my applications, but unfortunately there is no good proof implementation for Saga pattern, but there is a really nice implementation for Broadway. Uh, if you don't know what the Broadway is, it's a former, um, it's a first implementation of a few concepts like CQRS, like, like even sourcing for PHP, and some applications are using a Broadway. So let's check a few examples how you can implement a saga in, 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 in PHP using a Broadway. It will be not complicated because this problem is not complicated, to be honest. And uh, <laughs> by the way, the, the IT systems are only in two states, only. Too easy to bother, <laughs> too complicated to maintain. So let's, <laughs> let's do everything uh, to keep it extremely simple. Okay, so this is a event which represents that our order was placed. We've got whole class, just number of seats and the uh, order ID, nothing more. This is, a, this is an example of an event. Fact from the, from the past, very, very important. Order was played. Of course, uh, this is not a production example because we, we don't know uh, who was responsible for this order and, uh, and so on and so on and so on. But we've got the order ID, so maybe. But we don't know anything about the date. Okay, so we've got also we've got a, a command makes it reservation. As you see, still DTO, nothing very very complicated. We've got uh, just a properties getters and constructor, and we've got the event that our reservation has been accepted or rejected. or our order was booked. And uh, I think in the context of, of good modeling, uh, this is very, very important example because take a look at the naming. Naming is very, very important, especially if you, if you are working on, on very complicated software. Uh, if you need to translate your domain terminology into your terminology written in code, you need to perform a translation. And this is the place where you can make a mistake. You should always, if you would like to, 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 to implement your system very, very good, please use your terminology from your domain. And all the domains of redesign is all about ex expressing a domain language in, in, in kind of the code of the application. Okay, so we've got also a command which is reject order. And finally, we've got the reservation saga. So as you see, there are a bunch of possible, of course, this, is, this example is a little bit limited, but uh, you see that you've got some alternative flows. If something was happened, you should perform this way or this way, or third, depending on the context. And uh, in this example, the reservation saga have access to the command bus. Command bus is a place where your application may put some commands to, 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 to handle. Just 
put this command and someone will be uh, responsible for executing this command. And uh, this reservation saga is also a little bit configured, should be configured. So for example, if something uh, was passed to the saga, we may prepare ourselves to, to, to process this information. And finally, our saga should be able to perform differently under different conditions. So for example, when we've got information that our order was placed, we've got the event, it was happened, we can produce other commands and we can um, establish our workflow. So when order was placed, so we can make a seat reservation and send to this, this, this command to the command bus. And the uh, rest of the code is just uh, pass the arguments somewhere. The more important part is uh, last lines. Command bus dispatch, new command. Someone will be able to, should be able to execute this command. If during execution of makes it reservation command something was happened, for example, an event will be triggered, the saga should be able to, to, to catch this, this event and react. Okay, so when, when we get reservation accepted event, so we don't care who was responsible for this event, how this event was performed, what was the time between the events. It's, it's not important because the, the only thing which is important is we've got the event which is reservation accepted. So we can fire, we can dispatch another command. And finally we can mark this, this saga as done. Reservation process has been completed. You can also think that it's possible to save, to persist a saga object into the database. Of course, it will be um, restored uh, from the database to, to handle the, the, the commands, to handle the events, but right now you've got the, the place from the DB. You can select your reservation sagas and see what kind of, how many sagas you've got completed, how many sagas in, in you've got in this state, how many sagas you've got in this state, etc., etc., etc. And of course, finally, when reservation was rejected, you can make a, you may produce and send to the dispatch to command bus a compensation step command reject order because your reservation has been rejected. So from yeah, one more time, and the, f from this example you can see it's it shouldn't be very very complicated. I, I hope it wasn't complicated to read. It should be very, very easy to read because of naming, because there is no logic uh, in, in this class. This is all about the passing um, uh, new object and create new object under some conditions. And if you've got flow modeled this way, it's very, very easy, or should be very easy, one more time, to write a good test. Even if your process is very, very long, if you can still take a look at events or, uh, or commands, you should, be, you should be able to write a test like them. In, in last project, we implemented uh, a custom extension to, to, to PHP unit to make um, an event-based system uh, testable without an adopt. So you can model your situation based on event, you can execute your command on your system, and all you need to know is check if your system produced a bunch of events. It's, uh, it's highly connected to the proof ecosystem, but uh, maybe maybe we, we, we will um, expose this code on GitHub, who knows. And uh, yeah, one more time. It should be very, very easy to read even if this process is, is extremely complicated, to be honest. And the saga is only one of possible reactive logic. And uh, usually in project, or even storming, you can identify other example of reactive logic, which is a process manager. I don't like a class <laughs> with prefix, with suffix, a manager, because if you don't know where to put a method, so put to manager. 
uh, standard strategy from, uh, from legacy code. But in this scenario, a process manager is a pattern. This pattern was described and proposed um, in, in books enterprise integration patterns. If you've got this book on your, on your shelf, good job. If not, <laughs> take one. And, uh, and read, because this is a very, very important book uh, for, for, for us as a developers. And uh, the definition, one more time, sorry for a bunch of the text, but uh, I think this is important. Uh, the definition for the, the process manager pattern is like that. It's a central processing unit that maintains the state of the sequence of the processing steps and determines the next step based on intermediate results. So you can identify a path in your system and the next steps in your workflow will be depending on the previous steps. So let me show you a fast, fast example from a uh, from project of my colleagues uh, from, from Wroclaw. They're working on very, very interesting software related to the event organizations. And uh, in this software, you can organize, you can register yourself as a customer, free or paid, and depending on that, you need to execute extra steps. So if you would like to register as a free user, you can organize a free events without charging a money, and the only step in the reservation process is you need to confirm your email address. But if you are a business user and you would like to collect money for events you are going to organize, the flow is completely different. You need to confirm your email, of course. You need to confirm your phone number by sending an SMS. You need to confirm your bank account. For example, how you can confirm a bank account? You can send a transfer to, com to the company, and they, of course, return your transfer with, let's say, one euro on one, one zloty, or you can send a screenshot from banking system where your, your data your personal data or company data will be visible. And uh, someone will have to check your company details because you need to enter in one form your company detail, like uh, tax identification number, your address, your full company name, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, all this information must be checked and confirmed by the administrator. And uh, another requirement in the system is you've got two weeks to perform all the steps, but the s order of the steps may be different. For example, the first of first your first step may be just in email confirmation, then the bug confirmation, or you can start from the company data um, uh, registration. Who knows? From the perspective of the system, oh, there is a one case. If you've got uh, another account already confirmed, you can ask an administrator to transfer confirmation to your new account. And you don't need to confirm your email address, you don't need to confirm your phone number, you don't need to et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So quite complicated, but the answer is still, still very, very easy. Process manager. This is a part of your probably account registration process. So may maybe not registration, maybe an activation. So you can identify or you can introduce an activation process manager, maybe as an abstract class, and deliver three different implementation. One for, for free user where only this, this process manager will be interested only in event email has been confirmed. If you would like to deliver a process manager implementation for paid user, you can deliver class which will be interested in email confirmed event, phone number confirmed, bank account confirmed, et cetera, et cetera. So from this perspective, from this perspective, uh, Process manager is just multiple listener which can react something. So uh, this, this um, uh, paid user, process manager, have a start date 
and you've got a current date, so you can easily check if the two weeks period was exceeded or not. So, of course, the process manager, one more time, may be stored uh, in, in, um, in your database, in your, in your persistence layer, okay? You, you, even you can select your database to, to, to check what is the step which is the most problematic step for your user, where your user spends a lot of time. From the perspective of the code, as, as I said, process manager is just multiple standard. And the, and the saga and the process manager is just about message routing. If you've got, I'm sorry, if you've got possible four flows, let's say free user, paid user, alternative flow for pay user with transfer and maybe some other external system, all the rest of your system is, should be interested only in one event, account activation, your account has been activated. And no matter what kind of other extra requirements your, your, your business will prepare, you can easily bound these requirements probably in another implementation of this class. And of course, this process manager and Saga as well may be spanned across your context. If you've got few bounded contexts in your system, probably your long-running business transaction may be spun across them. So, so for example, e-commerce. The selling process manager or selling business transaction, it's a whole process from cut checkout to the delivery. So between the, the, the checkout and the delivery, we've got the payment context, we've got the, the, the shipping context, we've got the packaging context, and so on, so on, so on. As you see that this long-running transaction is spun across the system. And uh, using the event storming, the technique I mentioned before, uh, it's very, very easy to identify and point with business all the long-running business transactions and prepare a good implementation for that. Unfortunately, there is a small, there is a small uh, problem because if you've got, if you've got long-running transactions across all the systems, you probably maybe end up with code which is perfectly coupled with every single context in your system. So please beware, be, beware of that. So uh, the name of this, of this problem, because this is very, very fresh thing uh, proposed on one conference um, at UK, if I remember. It's a good octopus pattern, so it's, I hope uh, in next month we will be uh, able to, 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 to dig it more in this example. Okay, so to, to finish this, this talk, because uh, as I said, I would like to, to inspire you a little bit to think about your system in a little bit different way. Try to identify what kind of comments you've got, what kind of um, events your system may generate. If you take a look on the system, on your system this way, you've got the user, your user execute send a command to your system. Your command is executed on your domain. Your domain may produce an event. You can use an event to update a read models, for example, with CQRS architecture, and read models may be, in, may, may be represented or sent to the user as HTML file to the browser, and user, based on this data, may execute another command, and finally, you've got a circle of an application. And, um, I will submit this, this image on Twitter because I forgot to, to put it in the slide because th this picture, to be honest, changed my, my life as a developer. So as a takeaway from this presentation, I would like to offer you uh, a way of process modeling. Start to think about your application as a set of the commands and the events. Who is responsible for sending a command? It doesn't matter. This is why I don't care about the framework. I care about the domain, I care about the, the commands, and someone will fire this command. And if you've got the commands, if you've got the policies, reactive policies, um, to set a workflow, you can model with your business guy um, full, full running processes and offer alternative path if something should be rollbacked. So 
from my side, it's, it's, I think it's the solve. We've got a few minutes. If you've got some questions, hit me. If not, we've got the longer break. <laughs> so thank you very much. <laughs> Any questions? I will be available during the break. So, OK, so we've got the question. Hi. Hi. <laughs> uh, thanks for your presentation. Thanks. Uh, I didn't see any flaws in it, but I've got a question. Uh, in your opinion, what would be the best place, uh, the best fitting place for a, a saga orchestration? Would it be the uh, core domain, or would it be a, a, some kind of a separate bounded context? I think you can put in an application. I, I mean, when you've got the commands part um, and the events part, yeah, this is very, very related to the commands and, uh, and, uh, and the events part. So put it here. It's not infrastructure layer. It's not framework layer. Put it very, very close to the commands and events. And, uh, and that's it. I think this is a, this is a good answer. OK. Thanks. Okay, so thank you very much. See ya.